All right, salam alaikum wa rahmatullah, guys. What is going on? We back at it again. You already know how it goes. Is the how I learn Arabic <laughs> stories episodes kind of thing. So today we have our brother uh, Abu Bakr Imaduddin, straight out of Brooklyn, New York. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. So how are you, Akhi? It's been a long time. Last time it was uh, in Egypt. Uh, alhamdulillah, everything, everything, everything is well. Everything is yeah. good on my side, good on my end. How's everything with you? Alhamdulillah, man. Let me ask you something. Don't you think Egypt is just, it's literally Umud Dunya, like you meet brothers that you would never be anywhere else? No, I actually believe that. Subhanallah. Nah, okay. How I many, how many nationalities can you count that you met in, in Cairo? Well, yeah. Indonesian, no. Malaysian. Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean, French, Italian, <laughs> Russian, um, <laughs> what you call it, Canadian, uh, what you call it, brothers from Iceland. So I'm at 10 nationalities and, and, and the list goes on. It's everywhere. Like, yeah. The list goes on. And that's like everywhere. the weird, nah. like the weird nationalities, but you have like the main, you know, French, American, UK. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. But yeah. It's crazy, man. Like. You know, his brothers that I met in, in Cairo that literally, if it wasn't because of Umud Dunya, I would have never met yeah. them before. <laughs> they never met them. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Okay, so Alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah uh, let me pull up the questions, man. <laughs> I'm trying to make this professional, but you know, we always, we always uh, mess it up. But anyways, man, that's what we want in this channel. We want the organic, raw kind of content, you know what I mean? You know, we, we want no. to give it, give it to people in a natural way. So, so first of all, Akhi, mm. give us a little bit of context about, you know, yourself and how you learn Arabic and how you got to Egypt even. I so alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. My name is Abu Bakr Imaduddin, 20 years old. Uh, my journey in Arabic started when I was, subhanAllah, at a very young age. When I was seven, we could say. I started learning how to read Arabic from like my mother and father. They started teaching me, like encouraging me to learn Arabic at a young age. And you know, from age seven, I believe I went to Yemen <laughs> before I oh, actually really? went to Egypt. Now, I didn't know so that. I was studying. Now I was in uh, uh, what you would call it. Uh, I was in Sana'a okay. for a little bit, and then we moved to the Match. I'm not sure okay. if you heard about the Match, Sheikh mm-hmm. Mukbel and Sheikh Yahya Al Hajuri. So that I was, was in what year? Studying poetry. That was in 2005, 2005, 2006. Oh, okay, okay. Now, nah, now, nah. so it was in those times. And then, you know, mashallah, it led up to that. And, you know, I learned Arabic, so I came back to the States, probably like mm-hmm. around 10, maybe 9, Allah yeah. Alam. And, you know, my parents thought about, hey, listen, why don't you think we should go to Egypt, say you to Egypt, you know? Yeah. It's like the new thing, you know, the new trend. Yeah. So, alhamdulillah, you know, we went to Egypt and, you know, and that's when I can really say, like, the journey studying Arabic really started. No. It really hit me, you know, like, it hit me in the ribs, like, because I could, I could literally remember times where it was hard for me to, يعني, how you say, to have a munaqasha, you know, hard mm. to me, hard for me to have a conversation. And wallahi, man, ever since I studied Arabic, you know, I think of, uh, I think that a lot of, you know, doors open for me. You no. know, just in society, you know, meeting different people, networking with different type of people. Mm. And Arabic is universal language because, you know, without Arabic, I wasn't able to learn the Quran. No, you know? no, no, no. So, alhamdulillah, you know, Arabic played a big role, played a big part in my memorization of the Quran. No. So, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, and then also my parents. So, you know, nashkuruhum. No. Alhamdulillah, I, I thank them, you know, nashkuruhum. And, you know, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, for helping mm. me get there, you know. I'm still, you know, we could say uh, an amateur in Arabic studies and Arabic no. language, you know, and I plan on in the future, you know, to, you know, inshallah ta'ala, go back and study Arabic, you know, if Allah wills it. No, inshallah. So we, we can say that basically you, and this is how I perceive you, like even before when we were in Egypt, this is how I used to look at you. You kind of learn Arabic in a natural way kind of thing. You know? You can and say you, that because... You used to go to classes and stuff, but it was like... I, all the time I hear I hear you speaking Arabic was Amiya, and was, I think it was it from was my Azhar as well. 
Yeah, you can say that because I could because I used to go to Baruth. So yeah. <laughs> that right there was like a different type of ball game because yeah. we didn't really get the classical Arabic as much. Yeah. And you know how the Egyptians are, you know, you you can say uh Kif Halek, he's gonna be like Amile. You know what I'm saying? You be like Amile. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No, so no. it was like it was like kind of clash between, you know, classical Arabic and street Arabic. No. So, you know, mostly street Arabic is basically like survival in a sense, survival instinct. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Because half don't really understand Fusha. Or they at don't want to understand. They <laughs> laugh at you like, oh, you speaking <laughs> you speaking proper. Like, yeah. Get that out of here. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's like it's like in America. It's like in America, you know, we speak in proper English. Or you get a good example is when Allah Alam, you be sitting on a train. Yeah. And you start speaking, you know, and everybody you can be like, Oh, why you sound like a white person? Why you sound so proud? <laughs> you know, we so you so much used to slang. So yeah, that's yeah. how it was. And and you know, wallahi akhi, you know, to be honest, I actually picked up slang faster than Fusha. Me too. <laughs> me too. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't so, say me too, but it's like easier to, it just flows. Like you can say whatever, they understand you and it's not just like I'm here. Yeah, yeah, that's how it was for me. You know, instead of saying, you know, I'll tell you how to You understand? All these had to, had to, had to. Had to, yeah, you understand? So yeah. it was like, it was more of that. And, no. you know, I, well, I said something when I first came to Egypt. I was telling my parents, I'm never going to learn Arabic. No. This is hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is hard. So, listen to the guy in the corner store downstairs that looked from us. Well, I actually wanted to cry because I was like, yo, I don't understand what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. My chips was just like a struggle, actually. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know how to count them. So he's standing in the shop for like a yeah, good man, 10 minutes. And the guy had, had the flus. Rushing me, you know, they used to snatch the money <laughs> out of my hand. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, love I love. So, you know, I can say, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, Arabic had its ups and downs, yeah. you know, just like memorizing Quran or doing anything new in life. You will have mm -hmm. your ups and downs. But, you know, I like an itch they had, you know, if you focus no. and strive, then, you know, that's what Allah like to do. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, okay, so Amir is easy to learn. You just got to go outside and walk around and talk to people. But what about like actual Arabic? How do you know this, for example, what mm -hmm. you just said, this um what's the word like you know had things like this you gotta actually sit down in a class and listen to a teacher and mm. explain you that so how did that happen to you what methods do you go to what method do you use well i think alhamdulillah you know hmm, that's a good question nobody really asked me that before so i'm gonna try to answer that to the best of my ability <laughs> the markets I'm going to be honest with you, I've, I've went to, you know, alhamdulillah, probably three Marrakesh ever mm -hmm. since I was in Egypt. One was not far from Marrakesh in Nil in Hayy the seventh mm -hmm. district in Egypt. I forgot what the Marrakesh was called, but there was a Marrakesh that I went when I initially got there to Egypt. It was called Marrakesh Rawdat al Fusha. Mm -hmm. You know, it was Rawdat, you know, for Fusha. And I can say, wallahi, you know, ever, you know, ever since sitting in a class, you know, learning Arabic is. You know, it's like learning math for me. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, nahu nahwiya, you get that yeah. a lot. The rums, because, you know, after al adad al ashra becomes mm. muannath. Yeah. In a sense, so these things were very challenging yeah, in yeah, a sense yeah. for me. You know, and to be able to, you know, compare with others and, you know, you know, ask others, hey, listen, how do I how do I do this? How do I do that? Should I write like this? Should I put nukta, tamabuta, sukun? You know, there was a lot of rules and regulations in Arabic. Yeah. And, you know, alhamdulillah, that actually helped me in a sense. You mm. understand? Because when it came to like, studying Quran, I didn't really need to go over Tajweed. Mm. You know, it was just like an actual thing. You know, yeah. ghunna, ala, mm. qlab, ikhla, you know, and these things. And, you know, even with, you know, my parents, I would go home and, you know, I would write on, you know, some flashcards. Mm. You know, they'd be like, ma huwa al jadid al yawm. I would no. be like, put it, put it on the, on the fridge. <laughs> put, <laughs> Stick it on the fridge. Put it on the fridge. Nah, <laughs> yeah. but my dad did something that's so special. Like, he would, you know, everything in the house, like, he would look at everything in the house and go, like, okay, had a jidal. So he no. would take the flashcard and stick it on the walls. So, you know, had no. a jidal. No, and, no. Then, and then we would have a couch and we write a had he arika. No. You understand? Then we stick that on the couch. No, like, no, no. postcard. Then we go, had he 
هذه مسبحة you know dicker beads وهذه يعني كشاف you know the light so it was like you know different things so mostly you know Arabic was learned from you know a visual perspective and also you know Uduni you know by listening to so you know I have I have both of good worlds you know alhamdulillah no so so would you say I mean the I just got confused with three questions I want to ask you, so I had to write them down. So the first question I wanted to ask you is is about your parents, because obviously this is a, a blessing, and I know your father, he probably doesn't know me. Al-Ameen, mashallah, barakallah fi. We used to, I used to look at him as, a, you know, the, the OGs now. You can't talk to these brothers like they're the OGs, so you got to respect them. So uh, <laughs> would you say that having, like, parents who, you know, practice and have this hirs al ilm and this hirs for, you know, this... This uh, I don't even know how to say hers to be honest in English, but this love for uh, for seeking knowledge would did that help you? Wallahi, akhi, the best support in the world is the support of parents. No, that's what I'm gonna say. The best support in the world for anything in life is the support of parents. No, as long as they support you in the ventures and the passions that you want, halas yani, you know everything is good. You know, I can say, you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, my parents always say, you know, don't give up. No. You know, don't give up. You know, don't don't be a quitter. You know, don't get to the finish line. You already see the tunnel and you already quit. You know, mm-hmm. you can't afford to do, you know, you can't afford to do that. You know, you you, you have to grow. You know, you have to adapt. No. And, you know, it was always about being able to adapt. You know, my parents always know. They weren't, they weren't always pushing me, you know, in a sense, because they know I could do it myself. But, you know, they always gave me that reminder. No. Like, listen, Akhi, you can do it. Ibni, you can do it, you know, especially my mom. She would push me a lot. No. You know, I'll wake up in the morning, she'll pop out, you know, kitab, out of be a day. Yalla, let's go over to Hawa. Assalamu alaikum. No. Alaykum salam. And ismi kada, and to ismi I'm like, no. alhamdulillah. So, you know, it was always that motivation, you know, I always had that no. motivation for my Especially my father's. You know, my mom was more like Arabic side, but that was like more called an side. So, yeah. you know, when it came to like, support, my mom mostly supported me in Arabic, yeah. and my father mostly supported me in Quran. So yeah, that's what I wanted you know, to. I, sorry, I hate to cut you up, but that's what I wanted to ask you because, and I, and it came out of my brain, because I remember when I was, you know, when you go to places like Egypt, for example, where there is a like community of 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 brothers, even sometimes even groups kind of thing. Uh, there is a mm. there was a school of thought that would say, no, nah, he just. You don't know Arabic, right? No, just go and memorize the Quran. You will gain a lot of vocabulary. Or other people, they say, no, no, first learn Arabic and then go ahead and, uh, and memorize the Quran. It's going to be easier. So what, what is your school of thought in terms of this? My school of thought is the second opinion. Mm. Okay, I actually would say both because I, a good example is people who memorize the Quran without Arabic, they're mostly in the West. Mm-hmm. And they have no full idea what they're saying. Mm. I've personally experienced that firsthand with, with a lot of Allah, you know, right now Ramadan, you know, Allah has blessed them with, you know, amazing voices. Mm. But you ask him, يعني, ما معنى والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صلاة المستقيم. Ah, bro, I don't know. Mm. I'm like, oh, alhamdulillah, yeah, let me get the tafsir. So I actually go with the second opinion because it's more wiser and it's mm. more, you know, it's more beneficial. Okay, yeah, it makes more Arabic. sense, yeah. Now, it makes more sense. So now when I get into the Ma'ani and Quran, I'll be able to understand my Ma'ana, you thabbitu Allahu alladheena amanu bil qawli thabiti fil hayat al dunya. So I'll be able to understand that. No. Understand more than, you know, reading and trying to guess and, you know, imagine and, you know, figure out in my head what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying. Yeah. And I say, you know, I would say for anyone, you know, if anything, if you just learn the Quran, you know, yeah, learn about the Quran, but if you're going to really going to learn the Quran, I suggest you learn Arabic first because then yeah. you'll be able to get a better grasp. And then it will be easier. Yeah, yeah. That's the truth. definitely. I can relate to that, man, because I did ten, myself, I did 10 months. I would say 10 months, then I left, then I came back. But I, I would say one year I focused on Arabic. Then on the second year is when I, you know, alhamdulillah, going to Al Azhar and um, the, 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 the importance they give to the Quran, I started to actually see how important it is to memorize the Quran. So that's when I went to Haramain. And knowing Arabic already, I used to. Uh, every page, I will read the tafsir. I will read it, read the page, and then read the tafsir. And once you understand, okay, one page, it was like, what? It was Ten minutes, ad- that's it, it's in it. You know what I mean? So, and I used, to, I used to always tell people, you know, a secret to memorize the Quran is the tafsir. 
Mm. Wallahi, it is the tafsir. If you can pop open, you can pop open a tafsir book in English and say, you know what? Let's go to Surah Zalzala. It has Zalzala, and you know when the earthquakes happen. I'm saying like, if you could just read that, you know, just read the tafsir a couple of times, you know, get a grasp and get an understanding. When you start memorizing the Arabic verses, it's going to become easy. It's going to stick like water. No. Because now you know what Allah is speaking about. Yeah. So now, you know, it's just by second nature, by tongue, mm -mm. you know, the kalima, it's, you know, it's like water. It's, it's a flow. Yeah. And, it's, and, and that's why they always say, you know, I was watching this TV show. I know this is off, you know, off topic, <laughs> but it's called Al Murattal. Mm. And, you know, Sheikh Mishari, the judge, you know, or I think Abdul Razak al Dilemi, he said, you know, if you want to be a Qari, you mm -hmm. must know tafsir. If mm. you want to be a Qari, you must know tafsir. If you no. want to be a Qari, you must know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. You must feel it. No. Because in order for the people to feel the Quran, they must feel it through you. Because you're the narrator. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? The narrator. So you're narrating to the Ammat al Nas, and you have to be able to, you know, reveal the Quran, you know, relate the Quran in a sense where. You understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about and they can understand it through you. Yeah, yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So an, you know, he made that as an important thing that tafsir is important. The Quran shouldn't just be just read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like just read. You know, it should be, you know, You know, so. Yeah, that's the, that's the key, man. This is why what I posted yesterday on Instagram when I said people who memorize the Quran. People <laughs> think that people who memorize the Quran that's <laughs> randomly, you know, sent. And the thing is, why I say that is because in the beginning, with Ad, when, when I didn't know, you know, nothing about, like, I didn't memorize no, no Quran. For me, mm. it was like, you know, if I, at that time, if, if you send me something like this, I would be like, what are you trying to, you know, you're trying to show off or something. But once you memorize the Quran and you understand the me, it's just a different, like, you know, it's not, it's not anymore. Like you understand basically how powerful these words are that you will just randomly read them, be in the street read, reading them. And this is a problem that I had in the beginning. I would be like, in the beginning of Haramein, I was like, you know, I don't like Haramein because you need to read in front of other people in this place with your, uh, you know, Riyah and this and that. But then once you start feeling it, you see that everyone is, I don't know, it just removes all of this bad, you know, uh, bad, uh, uh, all of this was was sad in your heart, basically. I don't, I don't even know how to put it in. I don't even know if I'm making sense. You know what I mean? But Quran, definitely, the easiest thing I can I can say to explain that is that Quran, when you memorize it, understand it, and 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 you are able, like like you said, to to deliver it. It's just like mm. it's, it's it's life changing, man. It's life changing. It's, nah, life -changing. it's like it's like a different level. It's like you know, it's like. It's like, subhanAllah, it's like, you know, I'm, I, let's say I'm working out. I, you know, I, I don't know how to do a bicep curl. So I go yeah. learn the anatomy of doing a bicep curl. So mm -hmm. I perfect it. So I'm able to feel the results and actually feel it better. You know, yeah. that's not the best example to compare to Quran. But, you know, it's, you know, in similarity, secularly, it, it makes sense. You yeah. know, definitely. Yeah. Allahu A'lam. Allahu A'lam. No. So. What was the the tour, the turning point once you got to Egypt, right? What was the turning point that made you, or was it just okay? What was the turning point that made you say, okay, I need to learn Arabic, or was it just the you know having two alhamdulillah practicing parents? I would say having two practicing parents. No, <laughs> I, you know I can't stress this enough, actually. You know, without parents, actually, I mean, yeah, I mean, without without those, it, it, not even parents, just you know maybe friends or family or someone close to you, you know. Without no. that support, you understand? Without that constant push, you know, Allahu A'lam, you know, he, I, I really can't say what really was my turning point because, no. you know, my parents were always there. Mm -hmm. So my turning point could have been day one or day eight or day seven. No, you know, because definitely. I had that constant motivation. I had that constant yeah. motivation. You know, Abu Bakr Kela, Abu Bakr do this, Abu Bakr do that. Come home at this time. We want to do this. We want to do that. You know, don't play outside too long. You know, come back, you know, do your maraja'a. Do you have, you know, so, you know, I used to hate it, you know, but yeah, then yeah. As, you know, as I started progressing no, that's, that's, and I started seeing results, you know, alhamdulillah, it just stuck with me, you know. No, definitely. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, when I met you, I think you was, what, 16? 16, 17? Yeah, I was 16. Yeah. So, I met you as a, 
as this you know this American guy man he comes here play reads his page and leaves you know he's a player basically so this is why I'm like Alhamdulillah that not many people you know not many people can relate to having two parents that will push you to to be uh you know there like and this is why one of the reasons as well why many young people who Alhamdulillah right now for example you're 20 you have it you know Arabic that's a big accomplishment already and you know it's, it's saving you many years if you actually want to continue you know and and further your your islamic studies but other people they actually need to become mature and they need to have kids that makes them mature they need to maybe go through a big musiba in their life to actually start practicing and then they realize that they need to learn arabic and they may be already 30 35 you know what i mean so what i'm trying to say with this is that you know this should be for us young generations it should be an, uh, a good example and a good thing to, to take Ibra of it, to take an example of it and, and actually become these type of parents, you know, like, like, your, like your parents. Because this is how we're going to save our yeah. descendants, you know what I mean? Um, so, uh, no, yeah, that, 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 that's true. No. Uh, so uh, let me ask you a question because we're running out of time, right? Uh, you. So you will agree with me. Because what, what you were saying, right? This is a, a known thing that when you start getting vocabulary, uh, it helps like having stickers every single place that you go. Yeah. Into. So would you, <laughs> would, you under, would you agree with me that the best way to learn Arabic is the same way every human being has learned a, a language in their life, which is basically as a baby, you learn first water, and then you learn uh, uh, one water, one water, and then you learn... Oh, I want water. And then you learn, you know, <laughs> hurts. And then, oh, it hurts. Yeah. You know what I mean? So will you say yeah. that, you know, first getting, first learning information as in words, vocabulary, and then gaining knowledge, which is when you are able to connect all of these and actually construct cor correct sentences. Will you, uh, you know, agree with me that this is the best way to, to learn Arabic? Or will you take the path in school of thought of going first into understanding the grammar and and you know how these other institutions do Wallahi a good example I'll give you a good example a lugha the language any language is universal no. you know a good statement mm. you understand so that's a good example Allah to Adam all the names so when we look at us we're descendants of Adam and we learn everything by name right mm. No. And, you know, I've seen individuals that watch, you know, Musal Salat mm. in a foreign language, but have the Tarjima, the subtitles at the bottom. Yeah. So, yeah, now you can learn a language one way and then you can learn English the grammar way, meaning getting mm. into the books. Yeah. Yeah, you got a call, yeah? Yeah, I got a call. Forgive me. So I say, um, learn, learn, getting into the books of Arabic of grammar is beneficial. Mm. Mm. For let's say, a part of the that's mujtahid. Mm. A good example is someone already in Azhar, someone's always in Jamia Islamia, you understand? Someone's always in, a, that's already in University of Malaysia. So, you know, getting into the, the books as, you know, already an advanced amateur. Nah, I'm jayden. But the beginner, the rookie, he has to adapt. Mm. Meaning that, he has to put himself in a society. He has to put himself in a community. He has to put himself in a group of amongst, you know, amongst a group of people where he has to learn. And the best of learning is through listening and visually. You know, mm. there are people, subhanAllah, that learn languages just by listening. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, Imam Shafi, he did this. And Imam Shafi, he did this. We went to Qabail to learn, yeah. you know, from the Arab Al Aqah. The, the real pure no. Arabs just literally just sit down there and listen what they say. Hmm. No. So, you know, that's like that's like today's Shabbat. If you look at the child, you know, you put an sheet on, you know, it only takes them a minute just to, you know, listen, or, you know, the older generation, you know, we put a song from back in the day, some hip hop, or, you know, Allah, no. Mustang, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. it just, it's, it's just a quick whiff, you know? So learning a language, you know, it depends on the individual and depends on Yani, how you say, you know, that, you know, how you say that focus they have in their life, mm. you know, however they need to learn or they don't want to learn. Because mm. sometimes it just comes naturally, you know, language is just, it's just a natural phenomenon.
people no. are able to just learn languages off the back. Yeah. You know, when mm. I got to Egypt, you know, the dude kept on saying, Marhaban, Marhaban. You know, mm. I'm getting all these people saying, Marhaban. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, that could be me. welcome. <laughs> yeah. He's saying, Marhaban, he's putting his hands, so, you know, he's using his yeah. hands. And then after that, he's switching up, you're welcome, you're welcome. Mm. So, you know, so language languages can be learned any way, anyhow, and in anywhere. You yeah. Know, Depend but society or where you at? Allah no, Allah definitely. I mean, the the what you said of learning through listening and applying and actually forcing your brain to try and understand is a really good example because we have an, an author of Ibn Abbas. He says, mm -hmm. I didn't know what Fatiru Samawati Wal Ard meant until I heard a woman from the Arab use it in a sentence and then I understood that it was but. أو يعني أبدأت so فاطر السماوات يعني بادي السماوات so through listening you might like for example Ibn Abbas he knew he hears فاطر he knows from the Quran فاطر but he doesn't know the meaning once he understood from once he seen it used in a sentence he was oh, okay so it means this you know what I mean so this is why as well one of the reasons you know uh, I have a Arabic program and so in the weekends we do uh, we have a weekly conversational sessions where I only speak in Arabic, strictly in Arabic, it gets super awkward because the, you know, my students there, some of them, they don't know, not know vocabulary. So I try to make you understand through Arabic what I'm trying to say. And it gets to a point where like, oh, I, I give up, please. Can you just translate? I'm like, no, nah, I ain't going to translate, man. You got you to gotta make, make your, your brain work, you know what I mean? So that was definitely a good uh, example that you gave instead of in, in in terms of like listening and really trying to to understand no, no. so no. let me ask no. you uh what do you think is the hardest part of learning arabic or what was the hardest no. for you the hardest for me was uh mm. Kata, writing mm. arabic mm. that was the hardest because you know to me our arabic is like an art you look at calligraphy khat al arabi it's yeah. an art to that heavy, you know, everybody doesn't have the yet for that, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, writing Arabic, you know, was a struggle mm. because, you know, I made a lot of mistakes with uh, Tashkil, you know, I wrote the Ains differently, my caps mm. was off, my ellipse was a little too curved, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I could say writing Arabic was pretty much a struggle for me because, you know, I'm not more of a person who has great penmanship, you can say. No. My, pen, my penmanship is not, a, you know, it's not up to par. So mm. that was resulted in, you know, my journey in Arabic being a little difficult because, you know, I wasn't so much of a good writer in English. So, you yeah. know, I just got worse when I started writing Arabic. <laughs> yeah. I was like, subhanAllah, because, you know, we write we write on the right side, I think, in English. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Min, I mean then we write on the left side. So that no. was like a little bit challenging. You know, I'm not yeah, yeah, to yeah. writing this way. I'm more to writing that way, you know, from the right instead of left and Arabic right from the left. Yeah. So, you know, alhamdulillah, I can say that was pretty much challenging. Plus, are you, are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. <laughs> oh, okay. So that could be a, a nah. struggle maybe sometimes for someone. Okay, so let me, nah. let's me let finish this interview by, by you giving an advice to the person that knows and acknowledges the importance of learning the Arabic language. However, he didn't start yet for whatever reason. I'll give him the five P's of wisdom. The five right. P's of wisdom. To, yeah, proper to. preparation prevents poor performance. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. When you mm. properly prepare yourself, you you know prepare yourself, you know spiritually, mentally, physically, you know in advance before you you know attack the situation. You know it's gonna you know outdo that poor performance. Mm. You know that's like you know saying that you know, okay, I have a test tomorrow. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna with that kid. I'm gonna go study. I'm no. gonna go learn. I'm gonna review so you know not necessarily saying for someone who's studying arabic they have to review but no they should you know get to know their alphabet tags like you know someone no. who's coming to america to learn english you get to know their abcs no you know, one two threes you know, so you gotta get the alphabet tag you know so you know that would be my my advice is that you know properly prepare yourself physically meaning that prepare to you know you know if you're really gonna go and study <laughs> Prepare to have some days where you're not going to eat. You're going to be up all night studying. Yeah. You know, prepare yourself mentally. I mean, prepare for that, you know, that mental blockage, meaning that that wall that's going to be put in front of you where yeah. you're going to want to give up. And then prepare spiritually. 
You know, make sure you have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because mm. if that connection is severed, then subhanAllah, you're going to have a difficult time. And you're going to have yeah. to make sure that your ibadah is on point more. Mm. Because that ibadah is going to help with, you know, your studies. No. A good example is, you know, a friend of mine, he was talking about yesterday. He's saying, yo, Akhi, I sin too much, man. That's why I felt this exam. You know, anatomy 101. Because, you know, I'm trying to be a doctor. That's what I thought. I no. said, yo, you remember when we were care? Went to Imam Shafi, no. and he complained. He said, yeah, Imam Shafi, you know, I have a problem memorizing. No. I can't memorize. Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, said, abandon sin. Mm. Abandon sin. Because verily, knowledge is light. Mm. In the mm. nur. Knowledge no. is light. And the nur of Allah doesn't shine upon the sinner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the nur of Allah, you know, it doesn't, you know, shine upon the sinner. So, mm-hmm. you know, in that sense, you know, you know, have istighfar. You know, remembering Allah is very important in studying Arabic or just studying, you know, ilm in general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, having a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, being able to, you know, you know, make dua, you know, do your adhkar, you know, stray away from sin. No. You know, because sin, you know, it it really blocks barakah. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. a good example is in uh, Surah al Nuh. Yeah, what do you, what's that? Um, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقلت استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا يرسل السماء عليكم مطارا you understand so you know we told you you know to seek repentance from your Lord because verily is all forgiven and Allah sends down the barak and the blessings so you won't you know a lot of people say I'm struggling أخي I don't know what to do this ain't for me I'm not learning Arabic no more did you make tawbah did you did you ask Allah you know you know you know did you ask Allah you know help me out Allah forgive me mm. because you know after that after that you know that initial thing you say that you know yeah Allah forgive me and all this and you're really putting your heart out Allah's gonna make a way yeah. Allah make a way for him mm. <laughs> yes, and he gives all provisions you know anything from beyond his imagination you put your trust in Allah you know, yeah. this is enough for you mm-hmm. you know so that would be my advice to an individual, you know, number one, taqillah, number mm. two, you know, prepare. And then number three, you know, have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. You know? Inshallah. Akhi barakallah feek. Wa jazakallah khair. And uh, for whoever Feekum. wants uh, to read classes, I guess uh, you are around New York, Brooklyn. If they want to find <laughs> no. you. Or through Skype Shabbat. maybe even. We're gonna put your um, your Instagram down below if anyone wants to ask you any question or something like that. No. And, uh, and yeah, man, for all the viewers and watcher and watchers, our time is up. Uh, I guess we will see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in and le- leave us in the comments. Uh, I don't know how to do that, man. I always try and but leave us in the say, comments, practice, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever you uh, want to say about this this uh, this interviews and what you like and how you felt. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.